This is Sean Plew from Hitters.com. Today we're going to take a look at Babe Ruth, some of his swing movements and what allowed him to be one of the best hitters of all time. So this is a great clip that I found. And I love this view because you can really see the path of the barrel and the position that he gets to here. He carries his hands kind of low. You see the barrel tip forward and then come around and into the baseball. And I want to bring to your attention that this position isn't unique to him. Let's try to stop it here. You can see Ted Williams here gets to almost the same position, right? And they both have the same actions with the barrel. So let's take a look at what, what they're doing here. Um, here's Frank Robinson. Again, the exact same position, carrying the hands low, barrel tipped forward a little bit. And what this does for them is allows them to create barrel flow, right? Here's Rogers Hornsby tipping it even farther than that. But I want to show you this example because he's really maximizing this momentum that's being carried around and into the baseball. So all of this action that's happening right through here is early bat speed, is, is deep in the zone. And you can imagine once he gets into this position, this last 90 degrees is really, really easy because he's built up all that momentum and carried it into the baseball. So you'll see that in a lot of hitters nowadays um, you saw it in hitters back then. I'll let you, I'll play the clip here for you. And I think it started because back then, especially the bats were so heavy. Um, you kind of needed that extra momentum to get them around. Really, really enjoy that clip. Let's take it. The, take a look at the next one here. You see how much movement's happening in the barrel, even when the when the barrel's going away from the camera here, right into there. Next thing we should take a look at is this weight shift that he hit with. Um, started really narrow and really strided out and has a much longer stride than what you'll see in players nowadays. Um, Obviously, he's swinging to maximize his power, right? Um, a lot of people would say that this kind of swing wouldn't work in today's game. But in this example right here, he's actually not shifting anything like what you'll see in other clips. Um, you'll see him really fall off balance. This is actually a really nice hitting position. I think this is a swing that can translate into the game today and the adjustability necessary to hit today. So this swing too, I flipped him righty on this one. Here's him next to Gary Sanchez. And you see a lot of the same movements in Gary Sanchez. And again, the, he's not over striding on this swing. Uh, you'll see them, the width between their feet is probably about the same. So. As he moves out, the weight stays over the back leg for a decent amount of time here. He's not jumping at the ball. He's not shifting to his front foot and then swinging. Um, even though he's moving forward, the weight's staying on the back leg. And something you'll notice between the two players, right? When they're at contact, So Sanchez has dipped his shoulders and swung more vertical, whereas you see Babe here on the left swings more flat. Uh, what you'll notice is the strike zone has changed throughout the years. Uh, back when Babe played, I think the catchers stood up and the strike zone was, uh, you know, higher. A lot more pitches came chest high and you had to really level out to hit those balls. Whereas nowadays, the strike zone is, 
essentially from waist to knees and we're going to have to tilt our swing plane in order to hit those balls see this one's waist high and see how far tilted he is to create that uh, trajectory that he wants but if you look at the movements here it's the exact same movements Sanchez has just tilted his shoulders to match the height of this pitch whereas Babe Ruth right his pitch came a little higher maybe six inches higher so he's gonna come through the ball more flat and what you get with that is you're gonna hook the ball a little bit more you're gonna hit it more to the pull side and that's okay you know if uh, that's what you're going for obviously Babe Ruth came up and he wanted to hit a home run every every swing so he's gonna come up and pull the baseball and and take advantage of that shorter fence to the pull side Last clip I have of him. So I really like how he, you take a look at the front foot. I like how the foot is almost over the plate. Um, something that you'll see from Carlos Gonzalez, um, Robinson Cano. I really like this feel with the heel up. This is actually a drill that I do for a lot of guys. I'll, I'll put them in this position and just watch their body flow through these natural movements and hit the baseball. Um, and you really get a feel for the right movements that need to happen within the swing. And a lot of coaches try to eliminate movement, but these movements right here, especially when you're, when you're getting momentum with the bat, and you're striding towards the baseball, but you're keeping the weight on the back leg. These are essential to hitting baseballs at a high level um, and hitting at the professional level. You need to be able to flow through these movements and, and hit the ball for power uh, and able to control these movements. So really, really nice feel going on here where the hands come up and the barrel dips down. Um, what you'll see from players nowadays is, is they generally hold their hands shoulder high to begin with, um, and that's okay too. But again, uh, with Sanchez, you saw the same movements happening, the same bat path, essentially. So there you have it, Babe Ruth. This has been Sean Plouffe. For more information, check out hitterish.com. Catch you next time. I'm the realest one that's repping. Oh my God, oh my God, if I die, I'm a legend. When they lay me down to rest, I know I was always repping. Oh my God, my whole life, my words been my greatest weapon. I know I